Okay, uh, let me just ask you this. Um, you've uh, you said you were taken to hell, yeah, and that you were taken to heaven, yeah. Um, how does hell look like? <laughs> Honestly speaking, I don't actually want to talk about hell because that place is a very horrible place. Each time I keep talking about hell, it is sometimes like the I do feel and I see that I'm I'm in that place. So anytime when somebody asks me about hell, I hardly tell them about hell. But hell is not a place you should wish your enemy to go to. Hell is a place of suffering, a place of punishment prepared for sinners. Actually, hell was not prepared for humans. Hell was prepared for the devil and for the fallen angels who are now demons. But today, humans, they are now the one going to hell. Hell is not prepared for human beings, but for demons. And it pains uh, God and it pains Jesus. Because when they see their creation perishing in hell because of their sin, it pains him. But those people who are in hell, they are lost forever because there's no way they can come out from that place again. There's no way they can come out from that place. And hell is in hell. Everywhere is filled with darkness. You only see two things in hell. You see darkness and you see the fire. A sea of fire. Very, very hot. The, when, when it touches the, the, the body, everything melts down and you can't see anything in hell. You can't see, even when somebody is close to you in hell, you can see the person to tell you uh, the, the gravity and the, the quantity of the darkness that is in hell. And the punishment, the demons punish you, they torment you. Now, the punishment people go through in hell depends on the amount of sin they sin against God. So, you mean that the punishment in hell yeah. is categorized? Yes, yes, it's categorized. There are some, uh, there's a sections, yeah, hell is in sections, and the punishment differs. Now, when the Lord took me to hell and took me to where yeah, uh, this late man of God was, uh, Ben Sine Dahosa. The Benson and Dahosa was with the devil himself in hell. He was in Lucifer's kingdom. And the devil established his kingdom in the bottom pit of hell, where the fire of hell started burning from. So Dahosa was with the devil. And the place where Satan is, the kind of punishment there is very high. And the reason why the devil took him to that place, the devil actually, he testified of it. He said that when Benson in the house was on earth, that Benson in the house caused damages, serious damages to his kingdom, uh, that he destroyed his powers, destroyed so many of his agents. He said that now that Benson in the house is in hell, that he's going to punish him for all the damages and all the pains, all the struggles uh, Benson caused him during his lifetime beyond earth. And so the devil supervises his punishment and he orders the demons to increase his punishment every second. So that is how it is. When you were ministering yeah. in, in church, I don't know which year was that, but in the ministry of yeah. that, I, I watched the video okay. and I saw that uh, like you were holding a microphone yeah. and your eyes were just like uh, you saw something, yeah. the microphone dropped from your hand, and then uh, you started behaving like, no, okay. like kind of screaming and yeah. gasping as yeah. if you were in hell. Yeah. And then your dad was saying, This is how it happens a lot of times, yeah. and they were pouring water on you. What actually happened? Yeah, what actually happened uh, was that while I was ministering, uh, sometimes the Lord will appear to me. Uh, when he appears to me, then he will just do his hand like this. And when he does his hand like this, immediately the gates of hell will get open with a great noise. And then I begin to hear the screams of souls in hell. Their scream is 
he's agonizing and then I begin to feel the heat of hell and sometimes it looks as if the gates of hell they are approaching me to receive me into her and when it happens like that I experience the same punishment that the people in hell are also going through and uh, the reason why Jesus always do that is because one he wants uh, the people to know for them to know to have a taste and f see the gravity uh, of the punishment that is in hell and that also for them to know that hell is not just a mere place but hell is real is real hell is real uh, though so many believers and so many people don't believe that hell exists, but I am a living witness of hell. Hell exists. Hell exists as heaven exists. And so that's it. And he wants people to know so that at the end of the day, nobody will have excuse to give to him. Because the Bible says in the book of Romans that of a man, you are inexcusable. And so these are just the reasons why he's doing it. So that you won't say, or anybody won't say that I did not hear, I was not an eyewitness of it. So that's it. How many encounters like that have you had, like when you are ministering to people? Well, by the special grace of God, I've had several encounters like that on stage while ministering. Though I can't really recall the number of times, but several times it do occur. Like, is it up to like five or six or ten? Yeah, yeah, up to by God's grace. Okay, okay. So, um, from the age of fourteen, yeah, you have been having these experiences. Yes. Okay, let's talk about heaven. Um, how many times have you been to heaven um, through these experiences? Uh, by the grace of God, I've been to heaven several times. I can't recall uh, the uh, the number of times. But heaven, wow, heaven is a very wonderful place compared to hell. Hell is a place of suffering, but in heaven you find peace, you find everlasting joy. In heaven, that is where you feel, you, 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 you feel the, the gravity of God's express love, of, of God's express love to humanity. Or the, the little love we are experiencing here on earth is nothing compared to the one in heaven. The one in heaven, the love of God is demonstrated expressly beyond measures. Beyond measures. So in heaven you find peace, in heaven you find joy, in heaven there is no sickness, no struggle. Everything is peaceful and everything becomes new. Everything becomes new. So heaven is a wonderful place that nobody should miss. Okay, um, you said uh, you've been to heaven yeah. several times. Yeah. And uh, does heaven, does uh, the, the place you actually visit, is it, uh, does it look the same every time you go or like you visit other different parts of heaven? Like maybe where they worship God or maybe where the saints live or mm. just okay well by the grace of god when i go to heaven heaven does not remain the same uh i met it before everything improves and everything changes uh, just like the, the bible says that uh, the mercies of god they are new every morning uh, so by the day by the day goes everything becomes new newer and newer and newer and newer just like that for all eternity for all eternity and in heaven the sense that they all worship God. Wow. They all worship God. Even the ones we the little ones we do here saying we are worshiping God is nothing compared to the one in heaven. The one in heaven is glorious. Is glorious. It's not what any uh, genuine child of God should think of missing. No, no, no. Okay, I have a, a kind of funny question. Okay. Serious. Okay. Uh, I haven't been to heaven and yeah. seen the beauty of heaven. Yeah. If God calls you today, would you go? Yes, of course. I'll go. After all, I don't have anything to do here in this <laughs> in this world. So if he, if he calls me, honestly, I will, I will go. People will say you want to die young. <laughs> Well, for uh, that is for the human that have, or that's for the human uh, mindset and their intellectuals. But with God, it is God's will. 
So his will supersedes that of humans, whether what human think, their intellectuals, that is left for them. Because God actually said in the book of Isaiah that my ways are not your ways, neither are your thoughts my thoughts. So if God calls me home, ah, better I'll, I'll leave this world because this world is filled with sorrows and uh, after all I'll be free from temptations, trials and other things. So that's it. Okay, so uh, have you ever been to heaven and you never wanted to come back before? Yes, yes, okay, yeah, that, that's it. Because nobody, uh, nobody that will get to heaven that would desire to come back, ah, no, 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 you don't do that. But over there, uh, is anything once God has said this, you must obey. Uh, though sometimes we want, ah, no, no, I, I love this place, I don't want to go back, but you must go because you are on an assignment uh -huh. you are on an assignment whenever you are on an assignment you must go back and uh, uh, fulfill that assignment but when you are not on assignment and you sleep in the lord because those genuine child of god who are in heaven they don't die they sleep that's what the bible says that they sleep in the lord and they are weak in god's in god's presence so but those who are in hell they are the people who died because uh, from there, from hell, they will go into the greatest suffering of their life. Okay. And that is the lake of fire prepared by God Himself. And there they are going to feel the, 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 the gravity of God's anger, of God's wrath. There they are going to taste and drink the cup of God's wrath. In the book of uh, Psalms, chapter 75, verse 8, that talks about that in the hand of the Lord there is a cup. That cup in God's hand is the wrath of God. So those who will go, who will finally end up in the lake of fire, they are the people who will, who will taste the wrath of God with Lucifer and the fallen angels.